Yes. Um, so I am half Kashmiri Pandit and I'm half Punjabi Sikh. Um, so I am very proud of both uh, of my cultural backgrounds. Uh, growing up in America, being bicultural is something very unique and something that I've really embraced. Um, my grandparents, my parents have really embedded that in me. Um, so I'm really proud to stand today as the first ever Kashmiri Pandit to stand for Congress and also as the only uh, Sikh woman to run for Congress in the country currently. My grandmother, my nani, um, Vimal uh, Malik, um, Vimal Chadda Malik, I'll highlight, she, um, she used to take me to Gurdwara as a kid, to the, actually the Glen Cove Gurdwara in um, Long Island, New York. And there I would serve longer. I learned a lot about um, you know, Sikh traditions um, and the notion of oneness. Um, and I'm really proud of that. And that's something that has really given me a very strong uh, sense of community and giving back and uh, is one of the core values that I really embrace in my, um, in my bid for Congress um, because that gets at the core of the tenets of, of Sikhism um, is this idea of feeding your community, of service, of making sure that everyone has what they need. Um, and that is really reflective if you go to Amritsar, for example. Um, you know, to Swat and Mother, the Golden Temple, and you see that um, everyone gets fed at the Golden Temple. Um, the halva is also the best in the world, I think. <laughs> and um, it's just a really beautiful concept to see in the community there um, in a micro level, and one that can I think, be scaled um, internationally um, and that can be embraced here in uh, Virginia District 10. So again, very proud of, of both sides of my heritage. Um, being Hindu and being Sikh, and uh, and very proud of the fact that I stand again as the only Sikh woman running for Congress in the country today, um, because we need the representation. Um, that's important. Uh, you know, today we focus heavily on the five Indian American members who are in Congress, um, but you know, preceding all of them was this one Sikh man who really came in as an outlier and was able to get the mass community support um, in his district at a time too when we were such a new immigrant uh, community in this country. And that's something that I'm really proud of and one that I think is very notable. I think the Sikh community again has done uh, very well as as is the Indian American community. Um, but yeah, as a subgroup, for, absolutely, in terms of education, in terms of business and engineering and IT and medicine across the board. Um, and also, again, very proud to say a community, you know, when I've seen it myself in New York, um, if there's a death, right, <clears throat> everyone bands together and they make sure that they um, are not just there for days and weeks on end for, for prayer of the person who's passed, but also making sure everyone's fed, everyone's taken care of. There's really this very tight knit sense of community. And I think that we see at a national scale and one that is really beautiful and that we can embrace in politics. Um, and a group that definitely needs the representation, of course, um, you know, there have been a lot of cases of discrimination against Sikhs, which is very unfortunate. I've seen it in my district, I've seen it in Virginia, and I've seen it at a national level. Um, and I say repeatedly, it doesn't matter um, your bank balance, it doesn't matter how prominent you are. If you're a Sikh man, you wear a turban, right, let's say. Um, it's a visible, um, it's, it's, a, it's a visible thing that, that you wear and something that can be um, used against you for, in terms of a, a hate crime. Um, and one where we need to create more awareness and create more understanding um, that uh, that this is, um, you know, this is something that's part of a religion and one that should be respected. Um, and that is through education, through awareness, and that comes from representation. When you have people in Congress who say, hey, I stand up proudly to be a Sikh and this is not okay, you cannot do this, that's when people really start to listen. And I think that's something that I uh, really want to advocate. I have the most cash on hand today, um, so I came out very strong uh, in Q4 with 567,000 uh, in cash on hand, uh, surpassing all candidates um, by by a lot. Um, and you know, they told me I couldn't do it. They uh, often underestimate you as a woman, as a woman of color, and particularly as a Desi woman. Um, and so I uh, I definitely worked really hard. Along with the cash on hand, I also have a very strong and growing team, and that's something that I want to highlight. I have a team that's right now 85 plus and growing, um, so a lot of great top firms, amazing staff that I have on hand, um, but also a volunteer team that's 50 plus exceeding. 
um, several in district, several in state, and also several nationally who are just really inspired. A lot of them are young Indian American girls in particular, which I'm really proud of. Um, a lot of young Sikh girls, for example. Um, and, uh, and I have also a very multicultural growing volunteer base of, of Latinos, of um, you know, people from different communities. Um, and I think that that's really important and that really showcases a strong base. In fact, this week, I met with several um, prominent Loudoun activists and grassroots leaders um, who all have taken note of the campaign. They wanna support, um, people are out. I have more than a dozen people out um, getting signatures for me um, and knocking doors. And so that, when I, when I see that, I see that that, you know, it's that, it's a top down and bottom up approach. The money is really critical for getting your message out and the grassroots field approach is really important um, in terms of having that base. Um, and I've seen that in all of like many organizations um, from local prominent organizations, right? Um, to national organizations reaching out to me, um, wanting to endorse, getting that recognition is one that um, that feels really good uh, as someone who is is really running a very genuine, authentic campaign um, and is building up that momentum um, and getting to speak at uh, several events. Uh, and a few to note is, for example, the Sikh International Film Festival in New York. I got to speak there. I got to meet with the filmmaker. Um, I've spoken with um, the head of Sikhs for America, uh, the head of the Punjabi Chamber of Commerce, the head of the Sikh Chamber of Commerce. So I've gotten a lot of support from very, very many prominent Sikhs, again, locally and nationally. And that um, that has also felt really great just from a community standpoint and one uh, that obviously is tied to my cultural roots.